next expert is Mr. John Harris. Come on up, John. Yeah, that's me. That's me. That looks like me, yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, you've heard of Johnny Walker. I'm Johnny Talker. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, Got to find these things. Need them. Okay. Uh, yeah. When Cole started this project, uh, it was kind of loosely modeled on uh, something called TED Talks. If you're not familiar with them, you can look them up on the internet. Uh, they're really quite interesting. They're kind of like this, you know, like kind of uh, five-minute talks, or they're a little longer, 15 minutes maybe. But. Uh, he asked us for anything that uh, we wanted to talk about, and I just picked the first thing that came out of my head, and I said, pirates, right? <laughs> pirates. <laughs> well, so I, I, I don't know why. I, I like the patch. I can talk about that. I can talk about peg legs and stuff. So it was supposed to be about pirate accoutrements, but uh, I got so interested in the history, I, it's pretty much pirates in general, right? So this is probably the most uh, recognizable picture. Not this particular one, but the next one there. That, that's uh, that uh, skull and crossbones thing. Is uh, one idea was that it was flown as a symbol indicating that a ship uh, belonged to the order of the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar had the biggest uh, navy in the world during the 13th century, and uh, that came about. At, behest of uh, Pope Innocent II, uh, who formed the Templars and, uh, and exempted them from uh, any form of taxation or authority except that of the Pope, which made them over time rich, because in Christendom uh, uh, everybody paid the Pope, at least the tithe, and probably more than that. Um, the Knights Templar were disbanded and their property confiscated by Philip IV of France, who was heavily in debt to them and who had his own tame pope. Uh, that was in France. Uh, on Friday, October the 13th, uh, 1307, Philip had the Templar Grand Master and all the knights that he could find uh, arrested and tortured in order to find the remains of the fabled uh, Templar treasure. Uh, it still hasn't been found, so if you want uh, a long-term project, uh, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> uh, 10%. Uh, this, <laughs> this is purported to be the origin of Unlucky Friday the 13th. And uh, yeah, that, that really is where it came from. Uh, alternatively, it's been suggested that after the Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned at the stake in 1314, which means he was tortured for seven years, unsuccessfully, uh, the only remains found were his skull and two femur bones, right, which are said to be the reason for their incorporation into the flag of the Knights of Malta, which uh, who were formed from the remnants of the Templars, and who were reputed by historians to be, or to be engage in anyway, piracy. Okay, so later day pirates also flew uh, red flags, orange flags, green flags. They had all kinds of flags, right? One of them was called the, the Jolly Rouge, or the pretty red flag, right? and it became the Jolly Roger in English. Uh, but the flags, uh, there's so many of them, but the one that Hollywood really went for was this one. So that's why we see this as the, the, the flag that the pirates always fly, but there were lots of them, just, just remember that. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, the next thing I was gonna talk about is the origins of the buccaneers, which is where you really hear a lot uh, first about pirates, right? So, um, mm, Originally, there were only a few hardy Frenchmen and, and some Englishmen that tried to make a new, a new life in the New World. Uh, uh, most of the territory was controlled by Spain. That's why they call it the Spanish Main. That means the main coast of the whole of uh, the Caribbean and Florida and uh, right down to South America. That was all Spanish territory, right? So pretty much, except for Brazil a little bit was Portuguese, right? So. So, the no and the northwestern shores of Hispaniola, which is where uh, Columbus first landed, that's modern-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic, uh, that became their refuge. Uh, while they were there, uh, the newcomers engaged in hunting feral pigs, goats, and cattle, and preparing the meat by drying and smoking it on uh, frames. Uh, and those frames were called by the local Indians, bucans, all right? 
and the meat was used to trade with shipping, departing the Caribbean, hence the name Bucanye, Bucanyes or Buccaneers. They were provisioners of ships leaving the Caribbean because everybody had to more or less pass by Haiti. Uh, eventually, around 1635, the Spanish became concerned as their, as, at their increasing numbers and banished them from the mainland. The nearest refuge was a small island of Tortuga de Mer, because, so-called because it looked like a turtle's back, uh, uh, some seven miles off the coast of Hispaniola. Uh, now, there were several power struggles for land over the next ten years between the Buccaneers and the Spanish, and uh, the Buccaneers were, became very organized and uh, finally grabbed uh, that uh, island of Tortuga, and France uh, sent, uh, built a fort and sent a governor to Tortuga. And uh, from that port issued almost all the pirates and buccaneers of that day, starting with Pierre Le Grand, Pierre Francois, Bartolomeu Portuguese, and Roque Brasiliano, and uh, ending with the greatest of the buccaneers, who was uh, Captain Henry Morgan, with hundreds of others in between. Uh, they were very predacious. Uh, they were preying on all the shipping in the area. Uh, that's because there were so many of them, they couldn't just provision anymore. They, they had to do something to support themselves. All right. So, anyway, so commerce in the region became came, just came to a screeching halt, and most of the trade had to be done overland to the Pacific coast and down through the Magellan Straits. It was it was really a bad thing. So the freebooters they they uh, they ran out of ships to to plunder. So. It, uh, it fell to the first Englishman, Lewis Scott, to become the first buccaneer to sack a town, which became the new sport, right? Uh, first town was Campeche on the coast of Mexico. After him came many more who preyed on cities throughout the Maine. The last and the greatest of these was, as I said, Captain Henry Morgan. In his plunder of Panama, Portobello, Puerto de Principe, uh, Maracaibo, and Gibraltar. Gibraltar is on, is we used to be, on, on the coast of, uh, of Lake Maracaibo. Okay, anyway, uh, all those plunders uh, of towns and ransoming of, of people were thought, uh, his share was $3,600,000. He'd be a multi-billionaire today. He was knighted by Charles II and made uh, governor of Jamaica, which by that time, uh, was English. Uh, most of the piratical stuff that you see uh, that's popular in movies uh, can be traced uh, back to popular novels such as Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, for example, The Peg Leg and Men with Parrots on Their Shoulders, The Black Spot, Treasure Maps, all that stuff. Buccaneers and privateers were pretty much outlawed and brought to heel by 1700 by the mutual consent of all parties in the Caribbean as peace became necessary to commerce because it wasn't all just Spanish anymore. It was Spanish, French, English, like lots of different, and Dutch. Don't forget the Dutch. Anyway, uh, so, so uh, uh, all that aggression was, was relegated to naval fleets and, and armies and so forth and became, you know, uh, not the purvey of, of just buccaneers. So, which is not to say that other pirates did not arise, such as Captain Kidd, Blackbeard, Bluebeard, Redbeard, Yellowbeard, blah, 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 uh, all the beards, all right, <laughs> who, were <coughs> who were summarily dealt with by legal authority. And when I say that, I mean they hung them, right? Yeah, pretty much all of them, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, um, there was a place in England uh, called, uh, it's, well, it's called Wapping. And it's uh, it's by the docks, and there's a place called Executioner's Dock, where they used to hang the pirates uh, on a very regular basis. Um, Captain Kidd and others were were hung there, uh, and their bodies left to rot in little cages for, as an example, to others. Right? All right. Does not play well with others. All right. As an interesting aside, the Buji tribe of Sulawesi in Indonesia has a history of piracy going back millennia and they're still feared today. The Dutch and English traders in the East Indies brought home tales of their cunning and ruthlessness and still frightened children with the bougie man, the boogie man. Okay, so that's where that came from. Uh, and that's one theory anyway. Some linguists would argue with that. But Okay, I, I just uh, got some uh, pirate slides off the internet and I'll just show you a few of them just real quick here. Uh, treasure map. Uh, I can't show you that too long. You might go there. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, 
this is a ship at night. Uh, I like to think of it as a pirate ship. Beautiful, beautiful picture. The next uh, pirate I'm going to show you is uh, world famous. Uh, he now owns two countries, stolen a lot of oil. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yes, very famous pirate. Yes. Uh, pirate on the uh, pirate on the shoulder. That's Blackbeard. Uh, well, what's left of him? Uh, uh, anyway, uh, he was shot by uh, a fellow. That's where they got the name the Black Pearl. Uh, this, this the boat. Uh, the, it was a little sloop actually that uh, captured him. Two of them. Uh, the one the one uh, that they had the big fight on was called the Pearl, and it was commanded by a British officer by the name of Hamilton. And uh, he shot Blackbeard and uh, severed his neck and uh, pretty much cut his head off, put it from on the bow. Anyway, crime doesn't pay. Uh, okay, treasure chest, maybe it does. Uh, there. <laughs> Telescope. Uh, yeah, I like him. <laughs> oh, pig leg, right? And, uh, <laughs> walking the plank and, you know, such uh, This is called a halberd. All right, and that, that's what they hung their uh, accoutrements from. Uh, you can see the little pistol, the sword. That's a, that's a hanger, right? It's part of the halberd. Uh, another look at the halberd. Here's a very unusual uh, purpose. It might be the very first, uh, yes. <laughs> <coughs> and I like him, too. <laughs> And again, we have a, a moment for some questions for John. Yes? Did you do any research on some of the female pirates? Like, you know? Oh, uh, I, no, I didn't, actually, because it would have carried me off into another direction. You wouldn't want to go there. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, uh, and and there's, it's a five-minute talk, so I couldn't really get into big depth, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, other questions about everything you ever want to know about pirates? Yes? Uh, have you seen any of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and if so, how do you feel about them? Oh, I love them. I love them. They're, they're entertainment, right? They're, uh, as far as reality goes, like, they have nothing to do with any of, any of what happened, but, but they're great entertaining movies. And uh, the period costumes, I thought the costuming was really good, right? Uh, the, uh, I don't know, the plots were kind of shaky. The <laughs> what plot, right? Uh, I, 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 I like the, the whole adventure story, though. It's a, it's a genre like any others, like, uh, like uh, the westerns come and go, right? And the pirate movies come and go. I remember I was watching them when I was a kid. There's different pirate movies, right? Uh, I thought they were pretty true with the costuming, though. They, they did a lot of research for that, right? Yeah? Any other questions for John? Okay, one more round of applause for John. Thank you.